these darn relationships why are they so difficult tammy c walker the owner of dreams are a reality i created this channel to provide light and love i'm on a relationship tip as um you all know i do maybe you don't know i do couples therapy and um some therapists shy away from dealing with couples. I wonder why. I know why. It could be complex. But I kind of welcome it now. After COVID, our practice, we had a barrage of couples coming to us saying, help. You know, it's COVID. Can't get out the house. People hiding in the bathroom on their phones talking to their secret lover and this is where COVID exposed a lot of stuff you either saw what you you saw what you was working with and you saw that either I really love this lady or man or I need to get the hell out of here that was exactly what was going on I do not love this person or I do not want to be here it was like exposure to the 10th power so, why are relationships so difficult? What the heck is truly going on? I could talk about this for about five hours because there's so many reasons why relationships are difficult. I'll just name just a few that come to mind for me uh, that I hear about, that I experienced, that I experience. I think number one is that doggone fear. Fear of being vulnerable they are going to find me out they're going to see who i really am i'm not perfect i'm kind of weak at times and weak i'm saying that not in a negative way i shouldn't say weak that wasn't a nice word i, I want to go more or less with sensitive um i'm hurting you know when i was a, a young boy uh mama she didn't show me no attention. She just had me doing everything around the house. And she just wasn't there for me. When I was a young girl, I didn't know my dad. I'm missing that part of me, even though I'm in my 40s now. I still feel like that little girl on Christmas time was wishing I had my dad. So a lot of times it's fear. But it's also the trauma and the hurt of the past. This stuff is going to come back up. Uh, I don't care what age you are. I remember my dad was a big burly guy, big manly man. And we stood in the kitchen at my um, parents' house. And he was telling me about his mom. My dad lost his mom at, I think he told me he was like 19. And he was not the oldest, but she told my dad oldest. Please take care of my kids. My dad was one of eight, and she wanted him to watch over her younger set of kids. And he, you know, he was telling me this story, and tears was coming out his eyes. And I'm looking like, oh, my God. My dad was like 5'11", big muscle, thick guy. And, you know, but as he got older, I, I began to see him cry. I remember he was crying at my wedding because I couldn't stop crying. <laughs> I remember him, of course, crying at my cousin's funeral who was murdered, his niece, and his brother's funeral. You know, these are sad occasions, but him in the kitchen being vulnerable, it, it really choked me up bad because I didn't know what to do. I'm not like his daughter. I'm like, oh, my God, poor dad. I, I mean, I tried to comfort him. I don't remember what I did. Maybe I pat him on the shoulder or back. I don't know. It was just a moment that I'll never forget. But I like to see guys cry. Come on, let it out, let it out, let it out. I'm not saying cry over everything. The bear is lost, you cry. Or weird stuff. Don't cry over weird stuff, please. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, no, no. But you, you want, as a woman, we want to know that this guy is not a robot. That this guy really cares. That you have a heart in there. And ladies, too. You got some ladies that don't show any emotion. I'm okay. I'm not going to cry. You know, I've had, I have people come to therapy. I said I wasn't going to cry today. Who cares? Child, it's between you and me and this wall, these walls. This office 
is your sacred space. Crying is so therapeutic. Oh, I just love getting those tears out. Oh my goodness. I mean, it show it shows you have a heart. You have integrity. You know, yeah, if you're emotional, you're crying every time something goes wrong. Now, we need to have a different conversation. But if you're crying because you feel heartbroken or your child disappointed you or you're sad over your parent, they're ailing, they're getting older, your parents passed away or somebody close to you passed away, I think it's um, I think it's healthy to do that. Okay, so first thing I said was fear. Also, I, this these are what this is why relationships are difficult. Two is um, trauma, the hurt of the past. I think three, just plain old selfish. We have to remember, being married is more than that day. Going to city hall, going to Vegas, going to Florida, going on a cruise or whatever. Have you got married in church? You know. With the big reception. All of that's real cute. It's real, real cute. Trust you me. Spend all this money. You know, and the wedding is for the guests. It's for your family. Because that's who you, you know, you, you're doing all this stuff to, for this occasion. But once the music stops, once the cake is eaten, once you've eaten that cake, once the rings are on the finger, now what? And, um... No, you shouldn't be coming in at 3, 4, or 5 in the morning. You married now. It's not boring being married or, oh, it's restrictive. Honey, listen, you marry the right person, it's going to be all love and bliss. You're going to have your ups and downs some days, but it's all good. Me personally, my next husband, I don't monitor them. I don't censor them. My ex-boyfriend, he'll tell you right now to this day, that girl never picked up my phone and scrolled around in his phone. I don't care. I don't care. Stop going through each other's phones. If you got somebody and you have to scroll and break the code and watch their fingers and grab the password and scroll through their phone, you marry the wrong person. I don't want anybody who I have to censor you i have to monitor you that is not freedom being married is should be freedom and respect though yeah you should be able to i don't mean i don't mean like come and go as you please okay okay honey i'm out wait where the hell are you going y'all watch a football game you just jump up and leave i mean let's be respectful you can't be selfish but you're not dead you, you know I, it just is what it is. Just give people freedom. Um, you know, my last relationship, hey, he stepped out. Hey, I got to run to Macy's. I don't want to go to no Macy's. Let him, he, hey, he like Macy's. Go. I'll be here when you come back. Go to Macy's, have yourself some fun or whatever. He need to pick up a tie or something. I'm not going to monitor and censor him. What are you doing? Where are you going? I don't, you know, when you love someone, set them free. Let them be them. And that's kind of like what keep your relationship going. Same with me. At that time when we were dating, he knew I was real busy with church. This is what I do. You want to come? You don't want to come? I'll be at church. You don't have to be joined at the hip. Give each other freedom. The relationships that work, the couples know what their partner likes. Oh, I like fishing. Go, baby. Go fishing. I'll be here on the couch relaxing on the back porch relaxing do you do your stuff together hey together we go shopping together we go out for dinner together we go and have frozen yogurt or we go for long walks in the park or we play tennis these are things I used to do you know or go to the movies or just different stuff whatever but you can't still think you're single and you're married you can't, like, be living together and you just want to do whatever you want and you're not considering the other person. Selfish. You see that your wife is burned up and burned out. I mean, she bringing home the bacon, frying it up in the pan. That was an old commercial. Um, and making more money than you. But yet still, you're not helping her with some of the house duties. Some men think they, should, they don't have to do that kind of stuff. I pay the bills. 
I'm not doing nothing. Okay, that part is cool. If you pay the mortgage and you pay most of the bills and you don't want to lift a finger, I kind of sometimes, okay, that part is fine. But don't burn out your girl. Don't burn her out. If she's still working too and taking care of the kids, it's got to be a balance. You got to do checks and balances. When Trust me, as a burnout woman, that's a turn off. And I, I, me personally, I don't want no part of it. I did that one time. I was in this relationship and I stayed a lot at his house. You know, he lived on one side of town. I lived in the western suburbs. He lived on the south side of Chicago. So I'm over there more, hanging out, going to work from there. And I'm keeping his apartment clean. And I have my own place. And I'm burned out because I'm not no maid. Uh uh uh. I'm never doing that kind of stuff again. We got to work together. Don't burn me out because I'm going to be out. It's a no. Ladies, stop letting these guys burn you up to shreds. Just just wear you down and out. And guys, stop doing that. If you really love somebody, you don't want to see them burn out. It's just about helping each other. If you don't want to do the housework, then get your girl a maid. Get somebody to come in once a week and kind of help tidy things up. Don't burn her out, though. And ladies, don't be lazy and keep a dirty house. You know, men like clean women. Hopefully, if they're not clean, if they not clean then that's another story. But a, a, a respectful, classy gentleman, he likes a clean house and a clean lady. Don't be dirty and nasty. I'm telling you, if I was a guy and I was dating a lady and I come busting in her house, that thing dirty, I don't know. That probably would conclude us. Now, I can't. <laughs> I don't do dirt. So these are just some of the little things, big things that causes problems in relationships. I'm not even going to talk about the infidelity, the cheating. That's just stupid. Why even be in a relationship if you don't want to be faithful? Just stay single, especially when you're not married. I never understood cheating and you're not married. That's the most strangest act. Why cheat? You're not even married. Do whatever you want. Tell them, hey, this ain't working out. Go play the field. Get it all out. But it's like people want to have it all. They want to have it all. And it, it usually drags a trail of broken hearts which it could lead to a lot of bad consequences unfortunately it leads to death sometimes all because we wanted to cheat now somebody's hurt now the new person jealous now it is, it's all this stupid drama disease because you couldn't keep your body parts to yourself now you got a disease you can't get rid of, a disease you have to live with forever. Now you are you got somebody pregnant, and you tied to this lady for 18 years. Like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I just think if we would address our fears, if we would address our trauma, our hurts of the past, if we would deal with ourselves, why am I a cheater? Why can't I be faithful? What's wrong with me? How can I fix this? Can I fix this? I think you can fix anything. But you got to want to do the work. You got to really want to be committed. You have to want to love someone selflessly. Not selfishly, selflessly. You got to give up yourself. But it could be good. It's not bad. I think it's looked at bad. So sometimes a relationship, marriage, ugh, gloom and doom. It's what you make of it. Communication goes so far. You can you could turn something so bad into something so beautiful just by opening your mouth and saying yay or nay. No, I don't like that. No, I really need this. You know, I feel that when you do this, blah, 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 I feel I would really like, I'm going to try. I heard what you said. All those things really can change the dynamics to a relationship. I'm making it sound so simple, right? It feels so simple. 
divorce rate wouldn't be what it is. It would be 20%. I don't even know what it is anymore. I stopped checking. Probably in the 50s. Which is bad. 50 some percent. Oh, God. Tammy C. Walker. I'm out of here, you all. I'm great. Start up my Saturday. Have a good day. Think about some stuff, though. With this relationship stuff, if you if you are in between or even in one right now, a long term one, long time marriage, long term partnership, maybe you can improve some things you're doing and improve your relationship. Get some books about it. Some beautiful books out here. Watch YouTube. Take care. Have a good one now. Thank you all. Bye.